A stern man sat on the edge of the mountain. Next to him was a sword stuck in the ground. Before leaving for another world, the teacher left him a will along with a sword. Having trained with the sword for over a hundred years, he reached its end. But in the face of approaching death, everything was in vain. The man regretted that he had been obsessed with the sword all his life. If only he could live a normal life. While he was indulging in difficult memories, a boy he did not know was being beaten on the street by teenagers. He was humiliated and bullied in their Tang clan. As the son of the woman who destroyed their clan, he had to consider it a blessing that he wasn't thrown out. The Tang family of Sichuan, the renowned home of poisons and hidden weapons, has fallen. One of the new forces of Morim, which destroyed about nine of its sects, Hyun Young Hyuk, demon lord of heavenly lights. If his proposals were rejected, if he liked the woman, he would ask her to marry him. If his proposal were refused or ignored, he would take her by force. Yong Jung Hyuk's strangeness also extended to the Tang family of Sichuan. And Poison Phoenix Tangzi, he became his target, facing the heavenly radiance demon lord, who came to take Tangzi he away. The Tang family fought with all their might and won, but she spent all her resources. The Tang family was approaching its downfall. Tang Yong men suffered beatings. The bullies told him to blame his mother. This was his life because his mother attracted the attention of the heavenly radiance demon lord and destroyed the clan. Insults and indignations were showered in her direction, and towards her son too. Tang Zihei, the poison phoenix, was very scared when her beaten son came home. She started asking her son what happened. The boy laughed and replied that it was no big deal. The mother didn't believe it. He was probably bullied by the other kids. Yong Myung claimed that it was he himself who fell while playing. His mother took pity on him, and he promised to be more careful next time. He refused dinner and went to bed. He knew that everything that happened to him was not his mother's fault, but he had no one to complain to. Raising his voice will only invite retribution like his father. Even if you leave the Tang family, who will protect the mother and son? If their father had been with them, everything would have been different. The next day everything continued. Yang Myung again suffered beatings from the boys. How much longer will he have to live like this? The competition for the place of the young head of the clan was soon to begin. Tang Yen Nen was going to test the effect of poisons on the boy. Tang Yong Meng was horrified by this prospect, but they held him tightly. Yen Nen promised that they would not kill the boy, but would immediately give him an antidote. He definitely won't die. She pricked him with a poisoned needle. His skin immediately reacted to the poison and became covered in ulcers. How long can he hold on? After everything, he lay on the ground in the rain. He didn't have the strength to get up and go home. If he just dies, it will all be over. But who will take care of the mother then? He burst into tears. If only he hadn't swarmed so weak. If only he could resist them all. He doesn't ask for much. He wants to become strong enough to protect himself and his mother. Tan Yong Ming wants to live a normal life. A Melina flashed in the sky, and a sparkling sword crashed into the ground next to the boy. He wasn't here before. How long has he been here? Tan Yong Meng has definitely never seen it before. But the sword looks familiar. It was as if it had always belonged to him. The boy took the hilt of the sword and I felt that there was some kind of connection between them. Having trained with the sword for over a hundred years, he has reached its end. He learned the technique of sword formation, basic sword technique, way of the sword, and reached the absolute sword. All this was for the sake of one thing, to become stronger. But in the end, everything is in vain. He cannot stop the approaching death. The man is filled with regret, if only he could live another life. He would like to live a normal life, his silhouette is blocked by the figure of Tang Yong Ming, who firmly holds a sword in his hand. He remembered everything. In his previous life, he was a sword master, and in this life, he is Tang Yong Men. Now he has a chance to live a normal life. The rift between times glowed blue. The boy entered this radiance. Morning has come. The mother did not want to let her son go outside after he was severely beaten, but he reassured her that everything would be fine. He will be back soon. The bullies were waiting for Yong Myung to beat him up again. They were looking forward to an interesting day. Tang Yong men walked towards them with a confident gait. The young poisoner screamed for him to quickly come to them. The boy came up and looked into the eyes of his main offender. He asked where the bruises they gave him yesterday went. Yong Myung replied that such pokes would not harm him. The hooligans were speechless from such impudence. Yesterday he was groaning in pain, but today he spoke like that. Was yesterday's dose of poison not enough for him? Does he want to die? They may double the dose. The boy standing nearby rushed at Tang Yong Men with his fists, but the boy grabbed him by the face and he could no longer run anywhere. Yong Meng held back his opponent with an iron fist, and then he threw him away from him. He flew away with a whistle. This made a stunning impression on the hooligans. How did this frail boy knock out the strong Cho Nil with one blow? He didn't study martial arts, did he? How can it be? 
Tang Yongmeng told them that he could do everything they could. Do they want to take part in the competition to become the young head of the clan? How will they participate with such poor skills? He went after his offenders. They were confused and did not know what to do. Overnight, Tang Yongmeng became a different person. Tang Munchan tried to reassure himself by saying that Cho Nil simply slipped and lost his vigilance for a while. They have been preparing for the competition for years, and there is no way they will lose to this loser. Let's see what he sings when Moon Chan attacks him. The guy had a knife in his hand with which he attacked Yong Myung. Tang Yong Men intercepted his hand with a knife. He spun Moon Chan, and he lost both his balance and his last strength. All he could do was scream and ask for help. And Tang Yong Men said that if the participants are at such a low level, then the outcome of the competition is a foregone conclusion. Hall of Hidden Poison. Initially, the head of the Tang clan lived there, and important family decisions were made. But since the place of the head has been empty for a long time, this hall became the meeting room of the elders. The meeting has begun. The speaker said that the number of participants in the competition for the title of young clan head had decreased. A final decision must be made on whether Tang Yong Men, the son of the Poison Phoenix, will participate in the competition. He has not yet officially announced his participation. But everyone knows that he is bullied by other children. He has no achievements. He should be excluded from the competition. At this time, Tang Yong Ming was dragging his offenders down the street by the hair. The other elders noticed that Tang Yong Men had the blood of the former clan leader in him. Its exclusion may call into question the validity of the competition. The elder understood what his colleagues were talking about. But wouldn't it be a big problem for someone who doesn't know martial arts to lower the level of the competition? Even though the boy has the blood of the head of the clan flowing in him, now he is just a heavy burden for the family. At this time... The door swung open and Yong Men appeared on the threshold with his victim in his hands. The elders could not recover from surprise. Does the boy understand what he's doing? Tan Yong Meng replied that he understood everything perfectly. The elders were speechless. The boy walked to the middle of the hall, and he showed everyone the beaten young poisoner and Nen. During this time, he has suffered a lot of oppression from the Tang family, and is not going to tolerate it any longer. The elders all shouted together, How dare Yong Myung harm a child taking part in a competition? Doesn't he know that this is a serious crime? Tang Yong Meng was well aware of the family rules, but a fight between competitors was not a problem. The adults wondered if this child understood what he was carrying. The elder asked if the guy was really going to take part in the competition. The boy replied that they should check the area outside the main hall. Moon Chan and Cho Nil bullied him before, and he simply followed one of the rules of the clan to respond with kindness twice and with revenge tenfold. Some people cried out that the kid was just taking advantage of the felony exemption granted by the competitors. This puts other participants at risk. But the elder interrupted these conversations. They will give young Myung the right to participate in the competition. If he talks about it so confidently, why stop him? Why limit a legitimate and capable child? He hopes that young Myung's confidence matches his skills, and if he does not become the young head of the clan, he will pay for what happened today. The mother was very upset by this behavior of her son. She didn't want him to compete. So Yang Myung insisted that it was necessary. The mother did not recognize her son. He became so determined. Tan Yong Men, this name meant, survive as long as possible. She saw that her son had grown up and did not ask him where he learned all the techniques and how he beat three opponents. She just wanted to ask, is he sure of victory? The boy replied that since he was the son of the poison phoenix, he was sure. The boy thought that if someone offended his mother, he would destroy every offender. A month later, Poison Phoenix was talking to her brother. He was worried that this competition was not child's play. Phoenix replied that Yong Myung would not act without a plan. The great head of the Dark King clan, Tan Chok Hui, agreed with her. The boy's thinking, courage, and self-control are simply incredible for a child his age. But now he shows some strange attitude towards competition. Poison Phoenix replied that until now, the Dark King clan had protected Yong Myung and taken care of him before the competition. Tan Chuk Hui replied that the situation that Yong Myung had created was so serious that he had to intervene. He has high hopes for the boy, but he doesn't think it's normal for him to train with everyone else. Tang Yong Men was preparing to compete for the place of the young head of the clan. He ate right and slept a lot, and meditated to correct the distorted qi paths. There was no need to hone his strength and skills now. Someone like him, who had awakened in a past life where he had reached the level of a sword master, could try something like this at any time. However, Right now, it is much more important to strengthen the body that contains this power. At the age of twelve, the meridians and connections of the body are not yet very clogged. As its level rises naturally, a transformation, rebirth, will occur. 
On the day of the competition, the boy was completely ready for battle. Tan Chok Hui said goodbye to his sister, and the uncle and nephew went to the place of the competition. People were already walking towards the Hall of the Dark King, leading their children by the hands. Chok Hui went to figure out the rules of the competition and participation in them, and Yong Myung sat on the porch and had breakfast. The other children looked at him and whispered, Was this the same Yong Myung, the son of the Poison Phoenix, who beat Moon Chan? These are probably rumors. Everyone knew that that Yong Meng could not train in martial arts. Is this guy going to be in the same competition as everyone else? One of the mockers said that the level of competition had become very low, and then received a strong blow to the nose, after which he could no longer speak coherently. He just lay quietly on the ground. Other teenagers accused Yong Myung of using a concealed weapon, which is prohibited. But upon closer inspection, it turned out to be a half-eaten rice cake, which was thrown with great force and knocked the insolent one to the ground. Of course, all the children decided not to leave this event like that, but they were interrupted by the voice of Yong Myung, who said that there were only two near Moon Chan, but now a large group is standing here. They heard that Moon Chan was beaten. The boy approached his offenders, and he invited them to experience everything firsthand. Moon Chan didn't run away even with a broken arm. Well, are these guys, participants in the competition, definitely not going to run? Then the entire crowd of teenagers rushed towards Tang Yong Men. They wanted to kill him for saying such words. The teenager running in front suddenly pulled back. The imprint of Yang Myung's hand clearly appeared on his face. Tan Chok Hui heard the sound of a fight and ran to investigate. He saw a bunch of moaning teenagers. His nephew was sitting on the pile. He calmly finished his rice cake. He was already bored waiting for his uncle. And all that Chok Hui sees is that they were the first to attack him. There is no need to scold your nephew. Great elder Tang Sok Chen listened to the other's complaints that something like this should not be allowed to happen. There are so many injuries, and the competition hasn't started yet. If such a person becomes the young head of the clan, then something terrible will happen. The elder proposed changing one of the rules of the competition. The head of the Dark King's clan, Tan Chok Hui, announced that he would supervise these competitions, and now he will announce the rules. The competition lasts for four years, of which three years are devoted to training. Throwing skills are honed. The first year is devoted to finding a suitable methodology for individual training. Concealed weapon skills are learned. Over the next two years, extensive training is conducted under the guidance of designated warriors. The skills of making poisons are also honed. After the training is completed, the main competition begins. The form of competition is one-on-one -on -one duels, announced Tan Chok Hui, but he was interrupted by the Great Elder. This competition will involve a duel with Poison Goo. Everyone who heard this dropped their jaws. Poison Goo is a method where strong poisons are placed in a jar so that they fight each other, creating a potent toxin. The Goo Poison Duel is a fighting competition in which participants fight until only one person remains. Tan Chok Hui covered his face with his hand, and the elder said that due to the fight that had just occurred, many participants dropped out of the competition. If you continue to act according to the rules, then this may happen again. Thus, the elders changed the format to ensure that all participants unleashed their full powers. Yes, it's all because of Tang Yong Myung. This is not just children's fights, but a noble ceremony where people risk their lives to cross their boundaries. Now let all the teenagers fight, survive, and win. The winner will have everything that belongs to the Tang family of Sichuan. Tan Chou Nil, Tan Mun Chan, Tan Yong Nyong, Tan Seok Jong, Tan Kyun Ling and the other competitors got ready. Only one will survive. Tang Yong Meng thought that it was not that difficult and smiled. Sichuan Province, Black Death Alliance Territory, Dark Moon Sword Sect Camp. People gathered in the meeting room. The leader of the Dark Moon Sword Sect thanks the crowd. He understands that they are all busy, but asks to listen to him. Everyone is aware of the plan that the Tang clan is developing. According to spy reports, they announced a competition to become the young head of the clan a few days ago. Immediately after this, the children who took part in the competition left in carts. Now the Tang family is in such a situation that the head of the Black Death Alliance, Yu Kiljun, could destroy them at any moment. But for now they are useful, and he doesn't touch them. These children are the future of the Tang family, and if something doesn't go according to plan, it will cause great irreparable damage to the family. Although they deny it, the Tang family still has something that all members of other alliances need to be careful with. Are the people present in the meeting room figuring out when to move against the Tang clan? The leader believes that this should be postponed for now. Just tracking the cart and plucking the Tang family's buds will be easy, but it won't harm them much. The competition to become the young head of the Tang family lasts four years. One can imagine what would happen if they put effort into raising these children and they die in the middle of the tournament. 
This would be a truly fatal blow. This is exactly what happened to the J. Gal and Mo Yem families, recalled one of the people in the hall. The head of the Dark Sword sect, Mac In Hu, suggested tracking where the cart with children was heading and making his move in four years. The surveillance has already been established, and besides, he has planted a small seed. Perhaps the entire Tang family would fall into their hands. Common Mountain, the site of the Tang family competition. The person accompanying the children reminded that although the rules of the competition have changed, the schedule and activities remain the same. During the competition, participants will be called by numbers. The group of children he led was the seventh. Number 27 is Tan Ich Jong, 26 is Tan Mire, 25 is Tan Yuri. And where is the fourth member of the group? Number 28, Tang Yong Men thought and fell behind. The attendant called the boy to hurry up, and Yong Myung thought that something was wrong. Why doesn't the elder feel anything? The boy felt someone's presence behind them. It doesn't look like a simple passerby or a teacher. Someone is spying on them. But the boy did not tell the elder anything. The accompanying person led the children to a rock, near which there was nothing. A voice came from the rock, demanding the seventh group to tell them the password. Poison King of Hidden Poison. Password has been accepted. The rock opened up and lit up with a soft glow. The figure of a man with a fan in his hands appeared in the doorway and greeted the children. His name is Jegal Changshin, and he will help them in the competition. The Jegal family was once one of the five great families and the masters of incarnation. But now it has fallen due to the invasion of the demon lord Heavenly Radiance. Jegal told the children, whom he led to the area behind the rock in the flowering valley, that their family was able to survive thanks to the support of the Tang family. In gratitude for this, the Jagel family protects the competition from outside attacks with their incarnations. The landscape in front of the children changed. These are the incarnations of the Jagel family. You won't understand where you are and what time of year it is now. The attendant noticed that Tang Yongmen was very absent-minded. He was like that in the cart too. The elder told the children to get to know each other. They will have to walk hand in hand for three years. All the children turned their attention to Yong Myung. Tang Yuri said that everyone knows about that famous fight. Others also confirmed that they had heard about it. Tang Yingrong introduced himself to the other children. The mention of the fight upset Yong Myung. Do his companions want to say that he is to blame? That now they need to take part in the duel with Poison Gu? Tang Yuri didn't want to blame anyone. She was just surprised that the rules had been changed. And the other children directly said that Yong Myung was nothing but trouble. Some harbored resentment and a desire to take revenge on Yong Myung. While they were busy sorting out grievances, Coach Jagel disappeared. A second ago, he was walking in front of them, and suddenly disappeared. If you get lost in embodiment, you can get stuck in a spatial rift. The coach couldn't have disappeared into his own space, could he? What will happen to the children? How can they get out of here? Can they stand still until someone comes and frees them? This thought came to Yong Myung's mind. Tang Meyer didn't understand why Yong Meng was so calm. The boy silently examined the space around him. And Jagal stood in a secluded place and realized by time that the children had already begun to panic. You cannot leave the phantom dome of the seven castles without a spellcaster. Who would have thought that the elders of the Tang family would be so petty? Take over an entire group because of one child. But how could one ignore such a tempting offer? If he destroys number 28, then the Tang family will double the support of the Jagal family. The caster believed that the unfairness of the competition would only harm the Tang family, and he should think about his family. Suddenly he heard a strange sound. The magic curtain parted. Yang Men pushed it away with his hand and the children stared at their coach. Shigal could not find words from shock. How could this happen? Tung Yong Meng parted the magic barrier and asked what the coach was thinking when he abandoned them. They are still inexperienced. An accident could happen. Couldn't Terenor have been more attentive? Totem had no choice but to apologize. He frantically thought that there was no weak spot in his incarnation. So how did this brat end up near him? Tang Yuri pestered the boy to tell him how he did it. He replied that he simply cut the incarnation. But the children didn't even have time to blink an eye when the coach disappeared again. Coach Yeagle was angry that he had to run around the incarnation. But this boy's eyes cannot be fooled by simple tricks. How could a 12-year-old boy show such spirit? Finally, Jagal found the exit leading to the training grounds. He jumped through the barrier and sank to the ground exhausted. This should definitely be enough. No matter what method Yang Myung uses, he will definitely not get here. The coach was suddenly called out by the overseer of the seventh group, Tang Wanjin. He noted that the coach looked bad, and where was the seventh group? What is going on? Coach Yeagle was preparing for such questions, but cold sweat began to flow down his face. He replied that the seventh group would not participate in the competition. Wanjin was speechless at this statement. The coach replied that he had been waiting for the children for a long time, 
but they did not appear. They could be attacked by bandits or wild animals. These things happen. It's an accident. A loud sound was heard behind the coach, and the wall began to crack. This can't be true. His incarnation. Wanjin also stared at the wall. He decided that there was an intruder, but Jigal hurried to calm him down and go check everything. The wall of the incarnation was being pierced by someone's knife. She could not stand such treatment. Jigal pulled his head into his shoulders. A blue light flared up behind him. One of the highest forms of embodiment of the Jigal family, the phantom dome of the seven castles, was so easily broken. Tang young men appeared in the doorway, clutching a knife in his hand. Jigal and Wanjin looked at the boy silently, and he smiled evilly and asked the coach how he was doing. Otherwise, he was very worried about his mentor. The children were amazed. How can you destroy an incarnation with a knife? Young Myung replied that he did not destroy anything. He just cut an opening and it would soon close. We need to leave quickly. Wanjin pointed his finger at the children and sternly asked if they were from the village group. He was afraid that they were being attacked, as Coach Jigal said. Young Myung looked intently at Jigal and replied that they were simply lost. But the coach marked the entrance to the embodiment and they easily found their way here. The other children could not understand why Tang Yong Meng was lying. At this time, Yang Myung was thinking about the fact that Jigal was following the orders of the Tang family, but this was still a suspicion. But if after the competition, it turned out that he was collaborating with the elders, Yang Myung vowed that he would eradicate the Jigal clan. The trainer apologized for his mistake and ran off to check on the destroyed incarnation. Tan Wanjin, a member of the Bonvi squad, introduced himself to the children. He will be in charge of their training. The Bonvi squad is a direct military force under the command of the former young head of the Tang clan. Each of them was comparable in strength to a great leader. This was one of the Tang family's most impressive elite squads, but they disappeared many years ago. The previous young head was Tang Yong Men's mother, Poison Phoenix. Yong Myung directly asked why Wanjin is not in the Tang family. Wanjin replied that many years ago they fought to protect their mistress, the Poison Phoenix, in battle against the demon lord Heavenly Radiance and suffered a crushing defeat. Unable to protect their mistress, they became sinners and outcasts. And now Wanjin began to explain the rules of the competition. The first year is a period of independent practice. You can train as you see fit, receive books about martial arts depending on how you show yourself. Tang Yuri exclaimed that there really would be a legendary technique of the Tang family. Reign of 10,000 Heavenly Flowers? Lost in battle with the Demon Lord. Wanjin replied that this technique will go to the one who takes the place of the head of the clan. Information about it is not complete, but the essence is passed on from generation to generation. Hyung Myung had heard of a technique in which many hidden blades flew like a storm. Maybe he can copy it like a sword technique, using internal energy to control a sword without touching it. Hwanjin was not sure that anyone could master this technique. Children can train either on their own or in groups, where they will live and sleep. In the forest, they must get everything themselves. They didn't think that they would be provided with comfortable beds here, did they? Comfort will make them weak. Now it is important for them to adapt to extreme conditions. Now let the training begin. Yong Myung countered that there was no need to adapt to life in the forest. They need beds and proper food. Wanjin was taken aback by such impudence, but this kid destroyed the barrier. We need to be convinced of his abilities. Group number seven themselves attacked Yong Myung for making the boss angry, but they were interrupted by Wanjin's voice. If Yong Myung passes the test, he can spend the night in the estate inside the incarnation. But if it doesn't pass, then let him prepare for a difficult life. The test is simple. Group members will surround him and throw hidden weapons. The test will be completed if Yong Man manages to block or dodge their attacks at a distance of five steps. All this must be done blindfolded. The boy stood in the middle of the clearing, and around him members of Bonvi's squad were preparing to throw. The seventh squad did not understand at all how this was possible, and why no one was moving. Suddenly everything came into motion. The fighters acted with lightning speed. Knives, arrows, and shurikens flew at the boy. He quickly calculated from the sounds that there were 167 weapons in the air. It was a bit much, but it was easy for him. He put his hand in his bosom. Huan Jin's eyes widened in surprise. Yong Myung used the binding technique. His knife fought off all the objects flying at him. Many people overlook that martial arts is not only about technique, but also about principles such as depth. Simply put, weight, speed, and variability are fundamental. Ascension martial arts include breaking, scattering, tying, cutting, and sharpening. For Yong Myung, who had already understood these principles in a previous life and remembered everything in this life, this task was not difficult. For those who are just learning and have not achieved enlightenment, it was a shock. Wanjin couldn't believe that the boy deflected all the blades in one movement. Then he realized that he had not reflected it, but tied it. But it was difficult for Yong Myung to deflect the blades like that. 
He took off the blindfold and asked if he had passed the test. He wasn't sure. Huanjin stood there in a daze. It took a long time to call him. When he woke up, he cleared his throat and said that the test had been passed and the boy could go to rest on the estate. The seventh group asked if Yang Myung was going to enjoy comfort alone. Yang Myung smiled widely and went to the estate alone. There's probably a lot of different delicious food there too. The seventh group was furious and screamed for the bastard to stop. Huanjin thought that the outcome of this competition was predetermined. Young men turned around and advised him to include more meat in the diet, which is so necessary for a growing body. Wanjin was sure that this boy was destined to revive the Tang family. The wolves, who were eating the deer they had just killed, suddenly felt bad. Before they had time to understand what was wrong with them, they were attacked by screaming and screaming children. Tang Yuri's paralyzing poison worked well, and now the children were roasting deer meat over the fire. It's been four months since they lived in the forest. At first they only got scared and ran away from predators. The first thing they encountered was a bear. They could not find normal prey and had to chew roots and grass. It was hard, but they were able to find shelter in a tree. And the bastard Tang Yong Meng is probably doing well. Hanging around there, probably doing nothing. The children could not think about Yong men without anger. Tung Meyer only dreamed of being transferred to the estate, where he would show Yong Myung who was the strongest. Yi Zhang recalled what Yang Myung did at the beginning of training, and how strong he became if he trained all this time. While the boys indulged in dreams of revenge, Tang Yuri ate all of their dinner, and a scandal broke out, from which the forest became very noisy. On Mount Kandongu in the fortress of the incarnation of the Dome of the Seven Castles, a night training was underway. Several warriors surrounded the boy. Huan Jin announced the start of the fight. The men attacked Yang Myung who dodged their blows. None of the adult experienced fighters could approach the boy who seemed not to be afraid of the knives and swords that were pointed at him. He had just been taken into a ring of opponents, which was tirelessly shrinking, and suddenly the boy disappeared from this circle. The surprise of the fighters was genuine. Here there was a boy, but here he is not. Yang Myung floated in the air unnoticed by anyone. All his fingers had rings on them. He was going to try out a new technique. His eyes glowed green and he waved his hands. The soldiers finally noticed a boy flying at them from the sky and throwing some small objects. The rings on the boy's fingers turned out to be shurikens, and one of the fighters was wounded. The shurikens that Yang Men threw were too fast and could not be seen. In addition to his weapon, Yang Myung used a technique, a crazy dance of a rotating line, and his opponents rose into the air and swirled around him. Huan Jin understood that this could not happen. The boy killed the trained soldiers in the blink of an eye. Moreover, he controlled the force of such a wide attack so that the wounds were only small cuts. Huan Jin had never seen such a technique, and Yang Myung said that he invented it himself. The coach examined the shuriken. If you fall under such an attack, it will be difficult to get out of it. Using this technique must consume a lot of internal energy. How does Yang Myung deal with this? He once asked a warrior for a manual on eye techniques. He has mastered the eye of the flowing stream. Wan Jin was shocked by this statement. The flowing eye technique is one of the oldest techniques of the Tang family. It is incomplete and partially lost. Yang Myung realized that this technique is part of the Ascension martial arts. If used when throwing through trajectories that he sees, Yang Myung can direct the object to the desired point with minimal expenditure of internal energy. The boy filled in the missing part of the technique by studying everything on his own. Nothing could surprise Wan Jin anymore. He told the boy that in two months the children from his group will arrive here. They will undergo the same tests as him under the same conditions. They have already proven that they have the necessary skills to pass the tests, but they want to become even stronger. Yong Myung was happy to see how strong his comrades had become. The boy left the training ground. Yong Myung thought that in his past life, he was only related to his teacher, the Sword Ghost. Now, despite his origins and actions, he develops connections with other people. Can this be called part of ordinary life? For some reason, he really wanted to see the guys from his group. On the first day of training, the seventh group was completely inexperienced but now they have reached a completely different level of power. Tang Meyer did not dream of meeting Yang Myung for a friendly hug. Tang Yuri was about to break the bastard's head. Tang Yizhong kept his plans secret. When Wan Jin came to pick up the children to take them to the gathering place, he became scared. The children came to the estate and began to call Tang Yong men, but no one answered them. They loudly shouted threats against him. A muffled exclamation behind them made them turn around. Yang Myung hugged Tang Yizhong, and he could not utter a word from shock. He hid to give them a surprise. What did they want to do with him? Tang Yong Men smiled broadly at his friends without letting go of Yi Chong. An excellent opportunity to demonstrate the results of your six-month training for the guys. Let them begin. Or should he attack them first? 
The guys assured that it was just a joke. They didn't even notice him appear. Life in the forest, of course, hardened them. But Yang Men is an order of magnitude stronger. He has grown a lot and his face has matured. Yong Myung turned to Mira and noticed that his strength had increased, but he was lost in comparison. Mira thought that this guy had not changed. In the meeting room, all the coaches were waiting for Jongju Jagal. Finally he came. Six months passed and he still looked bad. Jagal decided to cut to the chase and asked if there was anyone notable in their groups. One of the coaches noted participant number two, who had made great progress. She has no strong desire to become stronger or to survive, but it is clearly felt that she has a strong dislike for someone, and this gives her good nutrition. One of the potential winners is number 10. He passed the military test in a month. Shigal thought about it. Only two candidates? Someone reminded that there is still number 18 that shows promise. Compared to number 28, they are worthless. Not only did he break his incarnation, but his training was also shocking. He demonstrated skills that were beyond the capabilities of even some experienced masters. It is very risky to get involved with him. It seems he has uncovered Yegel's plan. Yegel did not bring up the topic. He said that there were no special people in his group. And I thought that they needed a puppet that would be easy to control. So he will tell his nephew about number two. He heard that her face was disfigured after being wounded. It won't be difficult to manage. If you help her become the winner of the competition and the young head of the clan, and then arrange an engagement with Jagal's nephew, then both families will become related. This will expand the powers of the Jagal clan, allowing them to interfere in the internal affairs of the Tang family. And by strengthening its influence among them in favor of its interests, one day the Jagal clan will be able to absorb the Tang family. This is why they support their competitions. At this point, the meeting ended and Jagal left thinking that number 28 was too valuable to lose. If he manages to survive the tournament, we can then play on his desire for revenge. Go adopt him and offer him the position of the young head of the Jigal family. The coach laughed loudly. Having moved to the estate, the seventh group began to train even harder. Tang Meyer thought that there was more training, but for the sake of sleeping in warmth and comfort, you can endure it. Mijong worked in the laboratory. He was an excellent poison master, and he boasted about it to Yong Myung. Yong Myung took the bowl of poison and began to drink it. Yi Jong screamed in horror, What is this idiot doing? He began to shake the guy so that he would spit everything out. Yong Myung released clouds of green smoke from his mouth. And the living healthy one asked why they were shaking him like that. This poison was very strong and could melt the insides. Why is Tang Yong Myung still okay? Yi Jong couldn't understand what was wrong. Yong Myung grinned and replied, Who knows? Maybe Yi Jong brewed some low grade booze? Yi Jong turned green with hatred. None of the poisons had any effect on Yong Men. He drank them all and did not want to die. Yi Jong banged his head on the table. Is this idiot immune to all poisons? But the matter was different. The main technique of the Tang family is poison madness, purification of poisons. After all, it would be strange for something that works with them to fall under the harmful effects of poisons. If they are all masters of poisons, shouldn't Yong Myung be able to control the substances that enter him? As expected, the poisons entering his body were converted into internal energy and accumulated in the boy. The main thing here is not to overdo it. However, such a state can only be achieved through deep awareness. Those who regard poisons as weapons will not be able to understand all these arguments. Now weak substances are unlikely to increase Tang Yong Meng's internal energy. He needs something stronger. He'll have a lot to deal with before he can live the normal life he's dreamed of. He could have dealt with the elders in one fell swoop, but if there is an attack from the Black Merit Alliance or the Demon Lord Heavenly Radiance, the outcome will be unpredictable. Yong Meng does not have any personal accounts with the Black Death Alliance, but one cannot turn a blind eye to the fact that they divided Sichuan. The leader of this alliance is called a genius who destroyed three of the nine factions. If Yong Myung were his past self, he would have fought him with ease, but he had not yet reached the previous level. To live like an ordinary person, the boy needs to become as strong as he was. If only Yi Jong could make a poison several times stronger. He dreamed of creating the ten poisons of the Tang family. Yong Myung had never heard of such things. Yi Jong said that these are ten poisons, the recipes of which go back to ancient times. But most of the formulas have disappeared, and the tenth was so powerful that it could harm even a top-class master. The surviving substances and recipes were divided among the elders and are now kept by them. Yong Myung passionately wanted to get the tenth poison, but Yi Chong assured that the formula was lost and the tenth poison is so dangerous that its use was banned altogether. That night, number two fought her opponent. Perrin's face changed and asked what she did to him. He was consumed by an internal fire, and the girl watched indifferently as her victim died. 
He tried to reach her with his hand, but she moved away and immediately her opponent's body crumbled into pieces. He was instantly incinerated. Number two realized that the poison that her grandfather gave her turned out to be very strong. Here they are, the ten poisons of the Tang family. The girl knew that she would never forget the pain she experienced that day. She will accumulate that rage and pain in herself and will definitely take it out on Tang Yong men in a duel with poisons. Six months have passed. Wan Jin lined up the seventh squad on the site and said that they had been training for a year. They honed their fighting skills and compensated for their weaknesses. Finally, the time for the real test came. Now we need to choose a team captain. For now, the coach will appoint a temporary one. But by the third year of the competition, the guys will have to officially choose a leader. Each captain will represent his team in the Gu Poison duel. Anyone can take part if they wish, but this is a life-or-death battle, so it makes more sense for the team to be led by its most outstanding member. The coach appointed number 28, Tan Yong Men, as temporary captain. Yi Zhong noticed that Yang Myung could lay claim to the leadership position. Huang Jin replied that Yang Myung is only a temporary captain now. Does everyone agree with this? There were no objections, and the coach called Yang Myung forward and handed him a box containing a sparkling sphere. This was the Tang family's elixir heavenly heart pill. It was created on the basis of a decoction of the root of a hundred-year-old ginseng and significantly improved internal energy, depending on the level of the one who took it. The entire seventh team was dumbfounded in surprise. Why is such a valuable pill given to Yang Myung? This was a privilege granted to the team captain. The Tang family had high hopes for the captains. Personally, Wan Jin really counted on Yang Myung's success. When the boy takes this pill, he will feel something unusual. Yang Myung interrupted the coach and asked, Will they give him anything else? He doesn't need the elixir, but something else. Ikeon rolled his eyes. This idiot is at it again. Mira and Yuri were also outraged. They would happily drink the elixir. It was surprising that someone would give up the elixir voluntarily, but Wanjin gritted his teeth and asked what Young Myung wanted. The guy wanted the strongest poison, or rather the ten poisons of the Tang family. A variety of weapons were laid out on the table. Meyer was surprised. Where's the elixir and why did Tang Yong men bring all this here? The guy replied that they didn't give him ten poisons. He had to take a weapon. Meir's fist ripped open the air next to Yong Myung's ear. Why didn't the idiot take the elixir? He very quickly dodged the blow. Tang Yuri blurted out that the captain's decision must be respected. He is already very strong. Yi Jung imagined how happy the elders would be that they were able to keep the heavenly heart pill. But Yang Myung replied that he had not returned this pill yet. A few hours earlier, Coach Wan Jin had given out everything Tan Yang Myung had asked for from the armory. The coach was not sure that this was a worthy replacement for the elixir. This boy is the only one who asked for poison instead of a pill. The guy asked what the trainer would do with the elixir. The pill had to be returned to the medicine hall. Tang Yong Meng replied that he had an interesting idea. Crew members can band together to overthrow the temporary captain. Therefore, the seventh squad agreed to re-elect the team leader and give him the heavenly heart pill. Coach Wan Jin liked the idea. Since this is an investment in the future of the Tang family, there is no need to limit yourself. This can be a good motivation. Now Tang Yong Meng was telling his team that everyone could fight him whenever they wanted. The deadline is before the start of the fight with goo poison. The entire team rushed to get their weapons in anticipation of the end of Young Man. The guy looked after his comrades with emotion. What kind of children they are. He will not give in to them, but when he becomes the head of the clan, he will give each one a heavenly heart pill. Autumn has passed, winter has come, spring has come. Yi Zhang flew far back from the strong blow. Young Myung stood over him, who calculated that the guy had already lost to him 173 times. Meyer and Yuri watched this with indifference, doesn't Yang Myung get tired at all? He didn't even lose his breath. Yuri didn't really care how she got through the competition. She only wants to admire Yang Myung. Yang Myung extended his hand to Yi Zhang to help him up. If he has no rivals, then he will become the young head of the Tang clan. Yi Zhang thought that although they had not seen other teams, it was difficult to imagine Yang Myung losing to anyone. Wan Jin has seen that all the children have grown a lot during this time, and Yang Myung is now officially appointed captain of the team, which is not surprising and tomorrow the real duel with Goo Poison begins. Three years have passed since the start of training. In some teams, participants were expelled and some even died. Compared to the others, the seventh team looks very successful and has already reached a level comparable to the Bonvi squad. There is definitely something to be proud of here. The coach reminded the rules of the competition. Until now, the use of poisons in fights was prohibited. But in a duel with goo poison, even the strongest of them are allowed to be used, with the exception of the ten poisons of the Tang family. 
Number 28 needs to push his abilities to the limit. The day of the duel with Poison Goo has arrived. Yi Zhong gave Yong Myung all the poisons he asked for. Anyone would die from just one drop of the elixir suppressing fiery poison. Yong Myung must remember, even a drop can kill. This is not a lunchbox. An ocular poison is useless if it does not get directly into the eyes. Yi Zhong gave Yong Myung all the instructions and is not worried about him. But the whole team asks the captain to promise that he will win. Yong Myung grabbed the hand that Yi Zhong extended to him and hit himself in the face with it. Yi Zhong's jaw dropped. Blood flowed from Yong Myung's nose, and he promised that the only ones who could harm him were his seventh team. He went into the portal, which was not a contest. The day of the goo poison duel has finally arrived. In number two's hand lay a painted bottle. She was very lucky with the ten poisons that her grandfather prepared and with her new ally. She smiled. The day before, the Jagal family offered to help her. They told her about their plans. The arena for the duel is created by the incarnations of the Jagal family. They can manipulate it with unprecedented ease to put number two in an advantageous position. The girl understood that they would not help her without a reason. What do you need from her? The Jagal family is now weak for revival. They want to unite with the Tang family, but they wouldn't want to lose their independence. Number two immediately realized that they wanted to use her to interfere with the Tang family's affairs. What if she refuses? The messenger asked what she wanted. Number two, Tang Yong Nen has been waiting for this day for three years. She can't wait to meet Tang Yong Meng. Tan Cho Neil expected the same, and Tang Kin Ling inflicted damage on the strongest warriors of the Tang family in three years, and he trained like crazy. He really hoped that at the duel he would meet someone strong and interesting. The fourth team was represented by Tang Hiran, the fifth, Tang Jil, the sixth, Tang Menso, and the seventh, Tan Yong Men. He came into incarnation where the competition was to take place. He was in a great mood, the perfect day for someone to die. Let the duel with Poison Goo begin. The place for the fight was huge. The forests and meadows were very beautiful. Hyung Myung didn't know that the creator of the incarnation was watching him. He thought that number 28 would go from the seventh group. Hyung Myung surveyed spaces in which you could wander for a century and not meet anyone. The Jagal family has already made their choice, but those watching note Hyung Myung's excellent qualities. However, it needs to be eliminated quickly. At this time, Hyung Myung turned and looked closely at what was behind him. It seemed to the secret observer that the guy saw him. But how is it possible to break through so many layers of embodiment into reality? A sharp swing of the knife cut the embodiment, and the observer disappeared in amazement. Yong Myung was sure that this was the Jigal family. The spy had a very unpleasant look. Coach Wan Jin said that no one has the right to interfere in the fight. And this family interferes from the very beginning. But whatever they are up to, let them play. Yong Myung will ask them after the fight. He jumped down from the cliff. Jigal was shocked. He was behind several layers of embodiment, and this bastard still recognized him. If he had not quickly gotten away, the knife would have hit him in the eyes and blinded him. Yong Myung's sword art allows him to cut the space of embodiment to its very essence. Jigal had never seen such a level. Looks like he miscalculated. The boy cannot cope with this, and if he understands their intentions, he will take revenge. We must stop number 28 at any cost. A lonely girl covered in blood walked through the forest and cried loudly. How did this happen? She doesn't want to die. She just wanted to achieve high results, join the army and support her impoverished parents. She didn't want to become the head of the clan at all, and planned to give up and leave by mutual agreement. But then this guy appeared clearly crazy, with whom it was impossible to come to an agreement and surrender. He wanted to kill everyone. She will surrender to anyone she meets. The captains of other teams must be alive. And if that idiot becomes the head of the clan, she will immediately leave the family. The figure of a guy followed her. He called out to her and the girl became numb with horror. It was that crazy person, Tan Kin Lin. Ho grabbed her by the hair. Although her lighting technique was better than others, she had already given up. How pitiful her internal energy is. Tang Hearing shouted that they were all from the Tang family. But Kung Lin replied that he never considered himself a member of the Tang family. And he cut off the girl's head. She only managed to scream. Hyung Myung rushed along the forest road. Finally he found what he needed, a cave. There is no alien presence and there is no risk that someone will find him. He entered and looked around. There were no uneasy feelings. He needed to quickly ascend to the level of superiority. His body has grown so there shouldn't be any side effects. Right now. He sat down to begin his meditation. With the experience from his past life, he almost achieved enlightenment. He also needed internal energy to open the meridian of the poison with him. His body was enveloped in radiance. Thanks to Yi Zhang's poisons, all preparations are completed. Now Tang Yong Meng will destroy all the restrictions placed on his meridians and release the poisonous madness. 
his inner strength bursts out with the force of an explosion. Typically, martial artists experience indescribable pain during this process. Susavas are destroyed and fused again countless times. The body is literally reborn. With the experience of a past life, it is much easier to survive it a second time. A blinding green light poured from the cave and illuminated everything around. Finally it was over and Yang Myung went outside. He decided to check what he had achieved. He noted several significant physical changes. The guy raised two fingers and they shone with energy. He waved his hand and energy poured onto the mountain. Stones broke off from the mountain and fell to the ground. The efficiency of Yang Myung's internal energy was at a high level. Now he needs to learn to move properly. At this time, Tan Kyun Lin had already defeated the next participant in the competition, Tan Cho Neil. He was very bored with these weaklings. The wounded opponent could not say a word. He only regretted that, of all the participants in the competition, he came across this madman, an orphan whom the great elder raised as his own grandson. Tan Kung Ling was indeed the great elder's favorite. There were rumors that he was inhumanly strong. His opponent thought that he would have a chance if he struck first, but he could not even touch him and ended up in this position. He understood that he was about to die, but a thought came to his mind, which made him laugh. It's better to meet the idiot Kun Ling than Yong Myung. Kin Lin was taken aback. Why is his opponent laughing? Have you hidden some equipment? He replied that he remembered someone who was worse than Tan Kin Ling. Kin Lin was speechless from such impudence. He felt very upset. He decided to reveal all the cards and revealed that he was a spy for the Black Death Alliance. His opponent went nuts from such information. Since Kin Lin had spilled the beans about his mission, he could not leave the enemy alive. Since he will die anyway, the guy decided to introduce himself to him, a member of the Silent Sword sect of the Great Darkness Mac and Gook. He swung the knife over his opponent's head. Suddenly there was a change in his appearance. He froze and turned blue. He could not move and did not understand what was happening to his body. Hyung Myung approached them from behind. He heard that someone was here and decided to check. The guy greeted everyone. He addressed Cho Nil especially warmly and asked if he had recovered from their last meeting. Cho Nil couldn't find the right words to describe his feelings. Who is this guy anyway? He sees him for the first time. A few years ago, Kung Ling asked his mentor if he really wanted him to infiltrate the Tang family. The mentor replied that with such data, and if he pretended to be an orphan, someone would definitely warm him up. In the coming years, there will be a competition for the place of the young head of the clan, in which kinship does not matter. If he kills the other contenders and weakens the Tang family, then he will be recognized as a great warrior. But now Kin Lin was lying on the ground and could not move. He looked at Yang Myung and Cho Nil talking, and realized that that guy had done this to him. Cho Nil still couldn't believe that this was the same Yang Myung in front of him. Yang Myung was more interested in whether that guy was really a spy. Cho Nil confirmed that he heard it himself. He pulled out a needle from Kin Lin's body, which he threw at him. Cho Nil was amazed that Yang Myung poisoned the needle. What kind of poison is in such a small thing? Yang Myung asked if there were any other members nearby. There was no one. Cho Neil suggested neutralizing the poison to find out the spy's goals. At this time, Kin Lin began to move towards the sword which lay next to him. While his rivals were deciding what to do with him, he grabbed his sword and began to rise to his feet. Right now, Cho Neil was asking Yang Myung for forgiveness for the past. Suddenly, he stopped apologizing and shouted that there was danger behind Yang Myung. Kin Lin jumped high and attacked. Since he won't survive anyway, he'll drag that bastard down with him. The blow of his sword was stunningly strong. He definitely felt the sword enter Yong Myung's body, but it was an illusion. Yong Myung stood behind him. He didn't like fighting with half-corpses, but if the opponent tries so hard, he will eliminate it and not leave even a trace. Yong Myung put his hand on his opponent's shoulder. The defeated Kin Lin lay on the ground without signs of life. Cho Neil looked stunned at the death of his contender for victory, the strongest player. His main technique was the long sword technique of the black and white blade school a terrifying technique that allows you to quickly wield dual blades. At this time, Yang Myung asked Cho Neil what he plans to do next. There are only two left here. How to determine who won? Cho Neil immediately gave up, and Yang Myung advised him to leave quickly, and he immediately disappeared from the clearing. He no longer heard Cho Neil's gratitude for his salvation. Cho Neil mentally wished him good luck. In the main hall of the Tai Yul Muk faction, training was going on. Mentors could even monitor from afar whether a person was alive. Mac and Gook died. It was implanted into the youngest child. The youngest is dead. The elder took this news gloomily. Even though he was his illegitimate son from a maid, he was superior in talent to his brothers and sisters. The warrior was afraid that his wife would find out about his son and kill him. Therefore, he allowed him to live under the guise of a spy in the Tang family, since he couldn't give anything to his child as a father. That will at least avenge him. 
The man opened the door and went out. He ordered all students to prepare for battle on Mount Gongsan. The moment is approaching when they will destroy the Tang family. Their command is not in place. From now on, no one with the surname Tang should return from Mount Gongsan alive. At night, Yang Myung dined by the fire and thought that everything was strange. He's been here for several days and hasn't met anyone except those two. I didn't expect that everything would be arranged so that the participants would not intersect. If this continues, it may happen that the Zhegel clan arranged this so that the winner would be from their family. If the Jagels gain an advantage by helping the competition, in the future, they may receive the right to speak in the Tang family. He remembered Jagal who harmed them. After dinner, Yang Myung lay and looked at the beautiful starry sky. He remembered his mother and fell asleep with these thoughts. After some time, a figure number two appeared next to him. Tang Yong Nen searched for Yang Myung for a long time and finally found her. But who was in front of her? She set the condition to meet the last survivor or Yang Myung. And this guy doesn't look like one of those she needs. But he's very cute. Could it be someone named Jagel Chang Shin? He will be a little sorry, but he too must die. She put the pill in her mouth. Then she waved her hand and thick poisonous gas flowed towards the guy. The competition will end when there is only one left. He should have prepared better for the competition. She opened the bottle of her poison, and she poured it onto the blade. Young Myung suddenly asked her, Is she ready? He instantly threw his hand forward and grabbed the girl by the throat. There was nothing good written on his face. He asked her directly, Was she the one who conspired with the Jigal family? While the others are fighting, she spotted a warm corner for herself, and she planned to surprise the last survivor. He demanded that Tang Yong Neng answer what kind of deal she had made with the Jigal family. The girl could not release the steel hand that was squeezing her throat. In surprise, she dropped her blade. Suddenly, Yang Myung peered into the girl's face and recognized her. This is Tang Yong Nen. The second number couldn't understand how he knew her name. Yang Myung said that her face became like this because of him, and he can repeat everything. Jigal, who was watching all this, grabbed his head with his hands. The plan completely failed. Number 28 overwhelms everyone. At first, Yegal eliminated everyone except number 2. Number 10. Kyun Lin was able to quickly defeat his opponents, but everything came to an end when Yong Myung appeared. If number 28 wins, everything will go down the drain. Chaegul thought intensely. Blue light poured from the portal that led to the incarnation. Does this boy really have that much vitality? The Alliance Army approached Mount Gongsan. Jong Yong Siong, the commander's advisor asked, is there a lot of strength to destroy the bastards of the Tang family? There are more than 200 students alone, plus troops from other breakaway factions. There are about 300 people in total. The leader knew that this was a lot, but it was a necessary measure. Because Mount Gongsan is the territory of the local Gon sect, the power of the Gon clan cannot be compared with the power of the fallen Tang. If there are few troops, it will be defeated. And with such numbers, the Gon clan will wait. And having learned that their goal is not them, they will prefer to stay on the sidelines. Jung Yong Son asked the commander how the spy they planted was doing there. The warrior lowered his head. The guy failed. Jigal watched the entire conversation and couldn't understand what the swordsman from Tai Il Muk was doing here. And what spy are they talking about? But if they kill number 28, there will be no more fear that the Jigal family's plan will fail. Everything is going great. Number 2 finally recognized Tang Yong Meng, and this made her very angry. If only she could use dragon flame. Yong Myung suddenly asked if the blade was poisoned. He had never seen poison so bright red in color. Taking advantage of the fact that Yong Myung was distracted, the girl snatched a bottle of poison, and she wanted to throw it at the guy. But he grabbed her hand. She tries in vain. What's in her hand? He took the poison from her and noted in surprise that he had never seen anything like this before. With one hand, he continued to hold Yong Nen in the air. But if she remains silent, then he may repeat what happened last time. Yong Nen screamed for him to let her go. She'll tell you everything. But Tang Yong Meng preferred that she try the poison on herself. And he brought the bottle to the girl's mouth. She shouted that this was the Tang family's special poison, Kvarenko's poison, which they loved to use so much. Yong Myung looked at the bottle in his hand thoughtfully. Special poison? This should not be used carelessly. Finally, he found his elixir. How wasteful it is to use it for trifles. The girl asked to let her go. She gives up and will even help the guy fight the others. But Yong Myung had not yet heard what he wanted. Is she related to the Jagal clan? If so, let him tell you what agreement they made. Otherwise, he will feed this poison to her herself. He was taken aback by what he heard. Engagement? The girl confirmed. Marriage for the purpose of uniting families. Yong Myung understood that this fool had received an offer that she could not refuse. He was wondering what to do with her. Kill her or leave her alive and at the same time began to drink poison. 
Yen Nan widened her eyes. He drank Varenko's poison. The idiot decided to die? What happiness? Hyung Myung noted that the poison tasted like strawberries, and he was engulfed in flames. His head was on fire, and the girl with all her heart wanted this bastard to warm him to the core. However, whether her opponent was burning or not, his grip on her face did not weaken. A minute later, the guy stopped burning, and clearing his throat, was surprised that such a tasty poison turned out to be so spicy. The Tang clan believed that people who neutralize poison did not exist. Those who are immune to the effects of poisons are capable of killing dozens of people with a single breath or drop of blood. They were called the Lords of Poisons. Hyung Myung clung to the girl even tighter. He needed information. Did she really think he would commit suicide? He analyzed his feelings. It was as if he had mastered the martial art of Yang Gang. So this is how the power of the Ten Sons is felt. He left number two sitting on the ground and left. Tang Yong Meng couldn't understand why the sun suddenly rose at midnight. The incarnation began to ripple. Everything began to change quickly. Is the competition over? This can't be true. He listened and felt someone else's presence. There were more than 300 of them, as he could count, and it was very suspicious. Chagall could not help but notice so many strangers. But if the victim comes into his own hands, how not to take advantage of this? Yong Meng grinned predatorily. Now he has someone to exercise with. He quickened his pace and then ran towards those people. There will only be one winner in this battle. Jaegul reported to Coach Wonjin that there had been an illegal entry into their territory. There are about 300 warriors, and they are led by Makin Hu, the head of the Tai Yulmuk sect. Wonjin wondered how they knew about the well-disguised competition site. But now is not the time for an investigation. This detachment must be formed as quickly as possible. Jaegul hesitated and said uncertainly that the place where they had entered was the inside of the arena where the competition was taking place. And this makes it impossible for coaches to intervene. Wan Jin was dumbfounded. They can only hope for the remaining children of the clans. Maybe those who manage to survive will survive the attack. At this time, young men were standing in a clearing, and the bodies of warriors were lying on the ground. Swordsman Makin Hu found the body of his son. He lowered his head to hide his grief. Zhang Yong's son, his advisor, suggested that they were on the right track. After examining the body, he realized that the guy had been hit with something like a poisoned needle. Considering that there are no traces of battle, the attack was isolated. The father, in grief, thought that because of the poison his son could not die as a warrior should. In a rage, he gave the order to find and bring to him all the rats from the Tang clan. He is sure that there are those who notice them and are now hiding. The soldiers ran to carry out the commander's order. No one on this mountain with the surname Tang will be left alive. He will avenge his son. The soldiers were talking to each other. They had never seen the clan leader so furious. Maybe the body they found was the head spy. Of the wounds he had, there was only one, on his neck. How strong the poison was if the guy died instantly. That's why everyone is afraid of the Tang family. No matter how strong a warrior is, they will take his life. You must always remember this when you encounter them. The young soldier did not have time to answer anything when he suddenly fell to the ground. The soldiers recoiled from him, not understanding what had happened. The guy was attacked with a needle that hit him in the neck. There was no help for him anymore. The soldiers realized that they were ambushed and drew their swords. They shouted for whoever set the ambush to come out and fight with honor. No one answered them, but a rain of poison needles rained down on them from the sky. A poisonous green light illuminated the helpless figures of people. The soldiers fell, not having time to see the one who defeated them all with one blow. Yong Myung used the poison flame palm technique, it turned out to be extremely effective. Shooting needles doesn't require much effort, just the perfect combination. Leaving the neutralized detachment of invaders, Yen Man went to look for those parts of the detachment that headed east. Makin Hu was informed that one of his search parties had been destroyed. This news did not please him. There are no signs of a struggle, only wounds from blows with something like a needle. The same poison that was seen on the first body. There can be no mistake. Everyone died. At this time, New messengers came running with the news that the western and eastern detachments were also destroyed. A small group of soldiers remained with Makin Hu. His advisor sadly said that a little more than an hour had passed since their invasion, and they had already lost most of the army. Chief Mac replied that all the soldiers were killed by one person. If such a capable warrior had not been alone, the situation would have been even worse. Undoubtedly, the Tang clan master intervened. They are being hunted? He handed over command to Counselor Zhang. The attacker uses ghost techniques. Mac will defend the rear. Chan was not happy about this order from his superiors. Mac replied that he couldn't afford to lose the rest of the people. Therefore, I am sure that Chan will cope. He is counting on him. And the commander left.
The detachment led by Chan carefully made its way through the area. Chan thought that everything was too quiet. It would get dark in a couple of hours, and if they didn't discover the ambush by then, then they would all be finished. It might be worth retreating and regrouping before it's too late. He gave the command to leave in an hour, but a mocking voice from above replied that no one would go anywhere. Yang Myung sat on a tree branch and said that he personally did not let anyone go. Chan, an experienced soldier, did not even feel when this guy caught up with them. His face distorted. He ordered the soldiers to run for cover. However, there was no one left to fight. All the soldiers were dead. Yong Myung approached Chan and asked if he was the leader. Chan immediately realized that the one who carried out this monstrous massacre was speaking to him. He doesn't look like the famous master. It's just a boy. Needles whistled near Chan, and everything was enveloped in a green glow. Chan learned the technique of absorbing emptiness, moving objects by filling them with qi energy. But only the highest masters who have achieved enlightenment can use this technique. Yong Myung collected the needles and was in no hurry to use them again. Chan said that the guy has outstanding abilities. He had never heard of such a Tang clan master. What's his name? Yong Myung replied that whoever dies today doesn't care what his name is. Chan clenched his fist and prepared to attack the impudent youth. Since the boy can't wait to die, Chan will show what he's capable of. His body began to transform, his muscles expanding and tearing his clothes. He turned into a wild monster and rushed to attack. Yong Meng stood calmly and waited for the enemy to close the distance. As soon as this happened, he put his hand forward which was enveloped in light of energy, and blocked the monster's blow. He easily rejected the higher power tactics that John used. Yong Myung asked mockingly, Is this all his opponent can do? The boy could give him one more try to attack. Just let the opponent gather his strength and fight properly. John was taken aback by this statement. After the spearhead sect, one of the nine factions fell to the Black Death Alliance. Zhang Yun Sung voluntarily joined the alliance. The head of the alliance was glad to receive the master of the palm technique. On the first day, Chan met the head of the alliance and promised to improve his technique. His technique of shaking the tops of his palms has undergone changes. The head of the alliance called it the heaven-shaking palm technique. But this technique, which the head of the Black Death Alliance himself helped improve, was surpassed by some puppy. He held Chan's hand and didn't take a step back. Not a muscle moved on his face. Kovarenko's poison. Of all the fire poisons that contain the breath of the fire dragon, it is considered the most dangerous. If you take control of it with a poisonous madness aura, then like the key of a sword seeking to cut through everything in its path, the poisonous key will seek to saturate everything around with poisonous power. Yong Myung was surrounded by all-consuming flames. His hands shone with fire, and the fire devoured his opponent's hand. The heaven-shaking palm was defeated. Chan let out a wild scream and his body fell to pieces. Yong Myung noted that his new technique is very good. The power of the poison turned to flame. He will call this technique the Fire River of Poison. He turned around and saw enemy soldiers who were silently watching the fight. Yong Myung said that no one will leave here alive. Mac came out from behind the soldiers. He finally found the killer of his youngest son and his soldiers. His hands reached for the swords behind his back. He will take revenge and will not leave even the ashes of an insignificant boy. Yong Myung calmly waited for the attack. Mac ordered the unit to surround the enemy, and the soldiers rushed to carry out the order. They needed to watch out for poison and hidden weapons, and focus on draining the bastard's strength. Hyung Myung stood with his head down, surrounded. All weapons were pointed at him. Mac had lost too many students and allies, and nothing could compare to the grief of losing his youngest son. But their sacrifice will not be in vain. He will destroy this boy. Tung Yong Meng remembered his training days when he was also surrounded by fighters. Then he created a crazy dance of a spinning line. This time he decided to try something new. Waves of fire began to rise from his feet, making his figure more and more ghostly. The soldiers were amazed to see that the boy had disappeared. An order was given for everyone to be on alert. But a moment later, the line of soldiers began to thin out, and screams filled the space. Young men walked through the enemy line with a blade, and the soldiers fell to the ground. Young men's blade was covered in blood. Mac didn't even notice the puppy's movement. What is he? He rushed to the attack, wanting the scoundrel to pay for the death of his brothers in arms. Yong Myung stuck out his hand towards the running Mac and advised him not to swing his swords in vain. Mac flew away from the guy, who threw him back with the force of internal energy, and the swords of his army all collapsed. Mac decided that in front of him was not a person, but a demon who was tearing apart swords without even touching them. The scattered blade scatters fragments. Yong Myung controlled the release of power within a certain area. He created a whirlpool from the fragments of swords, which he directed at his opponents. This was the pinnacle of the Tang clan's hidden weapon art, 10,000 Celestial Flower Rain. It was impossible. 
but the soldiers of the enemy detachment could see everything with their own eyes. Young Men himself believed that this was not exactly the same technique, but for a small squad of enemies it worked very well. The battlefield was stained with blood. Young Myung decided to call this technique a hail of iron fragments. He was very pleased with her. He turned to Mac and asked if it was time for him to intervene in the fight himself and show what he was capable of. He drew his swords and took a fighting stance. No matter what this guy's achievements are, there is nothing to be afraid of. With the twin blade technique and the silent sword technique, which was developed by the head of the Black Death Alliance himself, he will grind the insolent one into powder. Young Myung noticed that this was the second time he had heard this from his opponent. Mac rushed to the attack. He will crush him. Mac's blow was unusually powerful. The guy put out his blade towards the flying enemy. With it, he managed to repel ten blows of a silent sword and the dance of twin blades, much to Mac's amazement. The boy even managed to yawn during the fight. Mac strengthened the technique to the final strike of the silent sword and used the Dark Moon Sword Sect technique. Everything was useless. He couldn't even get close to the boy. One of his swords stuck into the ground. Mac shouted that it was impossible to counter his dual blade technique with just a short sword. Yong Myung believed that he was quite good at wielding a sword and could easily read the next steps when using it. Mac asked in confusion, how did the boy cope with the silent sword? Hyung Mung grinned in response and put his short blade forward. Is this really called a silent sword? The sword has destructive chi. It was created with murderous intentions. Managing such energy is not particularly difficult. Mac didn't expect such feedback about his technique. Even he was able to cope with this only when he became a master of the double blade technique. But it's not difficult for this scoundrel. Is he really from the Taeilmuk sect? At this time, Yong Myung said that he knew little about the detachment that invaded their land, but he was sure that they were from the Black Death Alliance. Everyone knows that the head of the Alliance hones any martial arts of the Allies so that they are individually suitable for each. That is why all kinds of people, from rulers to peasants, entrust themselves to the Alliance. But he is disappointed with his opponent's technique. Anyone can mate with this technique. Mac's eyes widened. The guy continued that the head of the Alliance probably didn't have much hope for Mac. But for a small fry, Mac did everything he needed to do. Now Yong Myung will show what he's capable of. Let Mac hold his jaw so it doesn't drop. Mac already lost his jaw. Is this puppy going to show him what he can do? Yong Myung was enveloped in a ghostly glow of power. His appearance has changed. For warriors who have achieved superiority, the length of the blade does not matter. Internal energy lengthened the guy's sword, and he used the blade flow technique. This technique loosened the ground and surrounded Mac, who stood rooted to the spot. He knew that the power of a silent sword was powerless against the power of a stream of blades. If this kid can handle the sword key and use the flow of blades so easily, then he has reached the final stage. Mac realized that he had to run, and his thoughts did not diverge from the matter. He ran as fast as he could. Hyung Myung watched the enemy disappear. The idiot doesn't know that he can't escape the competition zone. If he catches his eye, then the end will come for him. But as the heir of the Tang family, Young Myung will finish off Mac in a family way. Shuriken rings sparkled on the guy's fingers. Mac rushed through the forest and wondered how the Tang clan managed to create such a monster. How could a clan in decline achieve supreme excellence? The head of their alliance will not sit idly by. At this time, shurikens appeared in the air flying towards him. Mac managed to dodge and they cut down trees like tofu cheese. Mac furiously fought off the deadly rings with his sword. You can't get rid of them simply by running away. We need to figure it out. He prepared to repel the attack. He rushed forward. He can't just die. Suddenly, his sword cracked due to the silent technique. But he repelled the attack with a second sword. His arm was torn off, but he did not give up. Finally, the last shuriken fell to the ground. He was injured, but he won't die from such tricks. He lost his arm, but while he is alive, the future is not lost for him. And the bastard has probably used up all his energy, and it will be easy to get him. But his thoughts were interrupted by a very healthy young man who entered the clearing. Even after such a technique, he was not at all tired, and to Mac's horror, with a movement of his fingers, he picked up the shurikens lying on the ground. The new attack stunned the wounded Mac. He left behind everything he knew in the Tang clan and came to the Black Death Alliance to make a name for himself. And I couldn't even lay a finger on this bastard. What is he? Yang Meng juggled shurikens in the air. This is the last thing Mac saw in his life. Finally, the weapon returned to the guy's fingers. It looks like everything has come to an end. He was quite good at testing the strength of his techniques. When he becomes the head of the clan, he will teach this to his subordinates. It's time for him to leave. He has a lot of unfinished business. The elders who cornered his mother. The Zhigal family trying to take over the Tang family. He will deal with everyone. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. 
Coach Wanjin was nervous and shouted to Chdegal that there must be a way to save the children. Chdegal feigned a sigh, but there was no way to interfere in the competition. He could not have imagined that everything would turn out this way. Tang Yuri didn't believe that nothing could be done. Of course, Jagel was lying, but until the deed is done, he will remain silent. The entrance was completely sealed when the competitors entered, so no one would leave the competition area alive. Bonvi's squad found and interrogated several soldiers who managed to escape from the zone. Against Mac and Hu and a squad of 300 people, even number 28 would not stand a chance. It's a pity to waste this talent like this, but he will interfere with the plans of the Jigal family, and it will be possible to appoint candidates who did not take part in the competition as the head of the Tang clan. Suddenly, everyone who stood in the clearing felt a surge of familiar energy. The fabric of the embodiment was cut, and a living and healthy Tang Yong men appeared in the opening. The seventh team rushed to hug their leader. They were very glad that he left the zone. He was very pleased that his comrades were worried about him. Zhagal turned into a stone statue in horror. Number 28 is out. How is this possible? At this time, Yang Myung warmly greeted his friends. He told them about his adventures. And Zhagal could not find a place for himself. What did these 300 warriors do if they couldn't cope with this little bastard? He simply couldn't believe it. Both now and before, how could the kid cut through the phantom dome of the Seven Castles? The dome imposed on his squad, and the one created for the competition zone, is no weaker in strength than the prison of the eight earthly punishments. Even a strong master would have been caught, but he simply cut them. Jagal covered his face with a fan and began to listen to Yong Myung's stories. The guy glanced at him quickly, which did not bode well. He would gladly kill the traitor on the spot, but for now this could not be done. Huan Jin was sincerely glad that Yong Myung was safe. Yong Myung apologized for all the trouble he caused. Now it was necessary to take care of those who remained inside. The coach wanted to hear a detailed account of the match and what happened after, but he didn't have time because the mountains began to hum and sway strangely. Is this really an earthquake? A connector appeared in the mountain, and a stream of light poured out. The phantom dome of the seven castles that surrounded the competition area began to collapse. Shrapnel rained down on people, depicting episodes of the competition, the faces of dead children and soldiers of the enemy army. Now everyone has seen for themselves what happened inside. When the rescue team led by Wanjin entered the area, they identified members of the Dark Moon School among the dead. Mak and Hu actually led the soldiers up the mountain. Did Yong Myung really kill all these people? This is simply ridiculous. Even an experienced fighter could cope with 30, no more. Wan Jin was called, and he went to the place where Mak and Hu died. Chaegul was shocked. Even the famous Mak and Hu died. Yong Myung approached the coach and said that there were too many attackers, and this made them easy prey. Wan Jin realized that Tang Yong Men's level was already higher than what was expected of the young clan head. The news that Yong Myung had killed 300 warriors and Mak and Hu spread around all the participants in the competition. This means that he has already reached the highest level. One of the unlucky ones, Tang Mun Chen was jealous of Tang Yong Men's fame. The guy himself was unable to participate due to a broken arm. This scoundrel broke it for him before the competition. This is Trash who was beaten because he was unable to learn martial arts. How could he reach such a level? Wan Jin announced that the competition was over. The only winner is number 28. Tang Yong Men. Let the one who wants to challenge the result come forward. The guy with the broken arm couldn't do anything now. He looked around. All the teenagers stood silently. Nobody wanted to dispute anything. And he also had to stay put. Wan Jin announced that all procedures had been followed fairly and declared the competition over. He ordered the soldiers to line up in front of the leader Tang Yong Men. Everyone lined up. The seventh group stood next to their commander. It was a very exciting moment. Wan Jin was glad that after so many years of decline of the Tang family, the new head would be able to revive its former greatness. In front of the line of soldiers, he recognized Tan Yong Men as the new master of the clan. All the soldiers knelt before the guy and recognized him as their leader. The seventh group was amazed. Yong Myung just became the head, and this is already the attitude towards him. Will they also have to speak to him so politely? Yong Myung shouted that he knew what his subjects wanted. They need to trust him and wait. The soldiers saw in him the true head of the clan. They vowed to follow him. Yong Myung turned and walked into the estate. His comrades followed him. But not everyone was happy about Yong Myung's victory. Moon Chen looked at the guy's triumph with envy. He vowed to take revenge on Yong Myung, even if he had to sell his soul to the demons. He will definitely destroy this upstart. At night, a man came to the field where the bodies of the soldiers still lay. Tai Ho from the Gondong sect rushed over as soon as he heard about everything. A black figure called out to him and approached him. Tai Ho shouldn't have left alone. With his status, he must behave accordingly. 
Taeho complained that he didn't feel anything. Isn't that weird? Henzo, who accompanied him, said that it was impossible to be near a mountain of corpses. Henzo himself was surprised that such a massacre happened on the mountain. Taeho agreed. The mountain is their faction's domain. They should have been told if something of this magnitude happened. Henso assumed that the Tang clan was deliberately avoiding them, but why? The Tang clan sent them gifts to hold the competition here. Taeho continued to say that their skill level is so great that someone could kill so many fighters single-handedly. Hensio went wide-eyed. I mean, alone? Taeho wants to say that one person did all this. Taeho saw that most of the dead had needle wounds, since people didn't even have time to draw their weapons. Seconds counted. Taeho simply had to see this warrior. He gave the order to go to Sichuan. Henso was strongly against such a plan. What if Taeho runs into the Alliance people? Taeho reminded him that his master had reached the top and could defend himself. He turned and walked down the road. Henseo muttered after him that he personally would not be able to defend himself. He asked first to return to the estate and warn the head. Taeho agreed with him. Currently, the Black Death Alliance was located to the south of the Godong sect, and the demonic cult was located to the west. The Godong sect has fallen on hard times. Taiho flew away, and Henso was thinking that his master was going to find the head of the Tang clan to find out who caused this disaster. The position of the Tang clan is not much different from that of the Guodong clan. Does Taiho really want to leave the Tang family to deal with the alliance and then destroy the demonic cult? The Tang clan has long been in decline. Will the master's plan fail? Hensu really hoped that he would not have to resort to the demon-taming sword technique. He followed his master. The third elder of the Tang clan was informed that the warriors of the Banwi detachment had returned with the participants. He put down the brush he was using to paint, and thought that it was all over earlier than they had expected. Of course, Yen Nen won. With her skills and Kavarenko's poison, it was not difficult. The servant stammered, and said that the young lady Yen Nen was not among those who had returned. The elder could not believe his ears. The guards near the gate were arguing about who won the competition. Disciple of the great elder Tang Kin Lin, or granddaughter of the third elder Tang Yong Nen. After the girl's face was disfigured, she began to train like crazy. With amazement, they saw Tang Yong Meng walking ahead of the group of returnees. Citizens gathered in the square waiting for the winner. They did not recognize the one who walked in front of everyone. They didn't know this guy, who is he? The girls blushed at the sight of this handsome guy. Some parents called their children, who went to the competition. Cho Neil walked in the crowd. He looked pleased. Parents who did not see their children among those who returned began to cry. Yong Myung thought that his mother was probably worried about him too, but she didn't come out to meet him. She didn't have much faith in her child's success. Yong Myung was afraid that she would not recognize him. When they passed by the general headquarters, Tang Yuri saw her father, who was very happy about his daughter's return. Yong Myung laughed. The daughter is already begging for a warm place for her dad. Yuri replied that her father is very capable, but he doesn't know how to look around so he's not being promoted. Yong Myung thought that those related to the elders would interfere with him. Therefore, it is worth acquiring honest and loyal people. Meyer and Yijiang can be helpful too. Yijiang is associated with the Temple of Medicine. The commander of the general staff of the Tang clan, Tang Kisam, welcomed the Banwi squad and the Jigal clan, who did a good job. Jigal greeted the commander. They were on good terms. Tang Kisam promised not to forget how much the Jigali had done for the Tang family. What would the Tang family do without the Seven Locks Phantom Dome? Thanks to them, he sent the participants to the competition with peace of mind. Shigal did not report that the dome was destroyed. Tang Kassam suggested that everyone go to the elders to sum up the results, and the Banwi squad can rest. Huan Jin interrupted the commander. They will not go to the elders' house. The commander was speechless. Huan Jin continued that the terms of the competition mentioned the Hall of Secret Weapons and Poisons. Wouldn't it be better to go there? Tang Kisam ordered the unit to be immediately disbanded for insubordination. Some detachment commander cannot give orders to the commander of the general staff. The prohibition to object did not surprise Wanjin. Young Meng stepped forward and asked Tang Kisam, Does anyone have more power than the young clan head? The commander stared at the young man and asked who he was. Who? Competition winner Tan Yong Men. The great elder asked Tang Kisam for the second time, Who is the winner? He answered for the third time that Tan Yong Men. The elder slammed his fist on the table. This is impossible. How did this scoundrel defeat Tang Yong Neng? Kvarenko's poison would not have left even a pile of ashes. She couldn't use it. The elder's face darkened with anger. Great Elder Sichuan Tang. Tang Siok Jun suddenly grabbed his heart. His student. Tang Kin Lin also lost? The boy had such talent and hard work. The elder saw this young man before the competition and immediately realized that he could not defeat Kin Ling. 
Second elder Tang Menxing shouted that there was some kind of deception here. Everyone decided to forget about what happened during the war, but here it is necessary to get to the bottom of the truth. Fourth elder Tang Ji Ren agreed. This bastard couldn't beat all the strongest candidates. The great elder called Yang Myung to answer all their questions. But unfortunately, only the head of the clan can order the young heir. Even if the head's seat is empty, the elders cannot issue orders on his behalf. Although Yang Myung was invited to the elder's house, he had no intention of going there, which infuriated the commander. He yelled at the young man that he had not yet been recognized as the young head of the clan, and he himself thought that if this bastard, who harbored a grudge against the elders, wins and becomes the head of the clan, then Takisam will also fall under the distribution. This scoundrel cannot go against the will of the elders. Young Meng abruptly interrupted the enraged commander. His eyes lit up with an evil green fire. Tang Kisam fell silent in fear. A huge flow of power illuminated the area. Tang Kisam had difficulty resisting the crushing current. There was no need to anger the boy. Yong Myung walked past him. No matter what the elders say, they will go to the Hall of Hidden Weapons and Poisons as stated in the tournament conditions. Let Tang Kisam go to the elders and say that their power has come to an end. The elders were shocked by such impudence. Tang Kisam bowed humbly and stammered and repeated that it was Yong Myung who said this. He demanded that the elders come to him and their power come to an end. The great elder slammed his fist on the table. This is unheard of. Even the poison phoenix was polite in their presence. But this could be to everyone's advantage. The boy has not yet been appointed young head of the clan. Its purpose must be questioned and eliminated. They will go to the hall of hidden weapons and poisons and look at this brat. He ordered all the elder's military squads to prepare to move to the hidden weapons and poisons hall to accompany the elders as instructed. The great elder called the commander of the blue dragon squad and he ordered them to follow there. Yong Myung dared to challenge the authority of the elders. We need to bring him back to earth. The troops lined up in battle formation. They will show the bastard who is the power in the Tang clan. The great head of the Dark King clan, Tang Chong Hui, widened his eyes when he learned that his nephew had won the competition to become the young head. Even when young Myung was little, young Hui sensed something unusual about him. But now this feeling has grown many times over. He thought his sister would be in seventh heaven. Suddenly, someone's angry face appeared behind him. The great head of the Poison King clan, Tang Ji Hyuk, Moon Chan's father, screamed like he was insane. In what sense did you win the competition? After that fight, he attacked his son's offender and thought that he would be lucky if he didn't die. There was no talk of eating. When the competition was over, he and his mother would pay for his son's broken arm. And four years will not pass before the father takes revenge. And he left confident in his words. Now Yong Myung calmly said that he remembers all the words that Ji Hyuk said. Not even four years have passed but no one will pay. From now on, let Jay Hyuk watch his words. Otherwise, his son's second hand might be torn off. Zhong Hui burst into a smile when he heard how harshly the guy put this impudent guy in his place. Coach Wanjin was surprised to learn that Tang Yong Myung was the son of the Poison Phoenix. After all, everything happened because the Demon Lord encroached on their mistress, the Poison Phoenix. The Tang family warriors fought bravely without sparing themselves, and the strength of both sides was equal. The head of the demonic clan himself entered the battlefield. From his power, everything around caught fire. In his hands, he carried the head of the head of the Tang clan. The demonic cult warriors were not weakened by the Tang family's poisonous attacks. They rushed forward, fighting to the death. Having taken up defensive positions, the warriors of the Bonvi detachment turned to the elders for reinforcements. But the elders decided not to risk their people, and they refused to help. If they had sent their people, the losses would have been avoided. And yet... When it was all over, they blamed it all on the poison phoenix. Because of her, the family almost collapsed. Why didn't she submit to the demon lord? She had to do this to avoid disaster. She could not object and accepted the renunciation to protect her child. Now the BNVI squad has realized who Yen Men is, and those of them who could not fulfill their duty are given another chance. His words were interrupted by an imperious shout. Zhong Hui and Yang Myung also heard a scream in the yard and decided to go find out what was happening there. The enraged great elder furrowed his eyebrows menacingly. Does this Bonvi squad really think they can get away with disobeying their elders? Where is this Tang Yong men? The elders appeared as Yong Meng demanded. They mobilized all their forces. They felt that their position was under threat. They all demanded that Tang Yong men be brought to them. The guy went out into the yard and lazily replied that there was no need to fuss so much. He was already here. Uncle was shocked by such an influx of elders. Has the nephew yet met with them after the victory? The great elder said that the boy had no right to call himself a head until he received their approval. Yong Myung recalled that he won the competition 
and now confirms justice according to the conditions in the Hall of Hidden Weapons and Poisons. What else does Grandpa need? All the elders were angry at such disrespectful treatment. The elder yelled that if Yong Meng wants to stay alive, he should immediately tell what happened in the test with Gu Poison, and let him not lie. The head of the Jiggle House has already told everything. About the intervention of Ma Ying Hu from the Dark Moon Sword Sect and 300 Alliance Warriors. What kind of fair competition can we talk about with outside interference? Uncle and the others widened their eyes. Yong Myung replied that Tang Kyun Ling and Tang Yong Nen killed the other participants, and he killed these two. And he finished the competition. Outsiders intervened later. The elder was no longer listening. He didn't understand who killed whom there. Yong Myung advised his grandfather to go to the mountain and see everything for himself. Unless, of course, the Godong clan has already removed the bodies. But the elder could no longer be stopped. His facial features distorted, and he shouted at the boy to die immediately. With incredible speed for his age, completely shrouded in internal energy and exuding clouds of poison, he attacked Yong Myung. And then he ran into a counterattack which threw him back. The elder flew away, somersaulting in the air. The audience unanimously thought that the old fool was to blame. Yong Myung exclaimed that the old man would have to believe that his granddaughter was dead. He held his grandfather tightly, who tried to repeat the attack. If the old man doesn't believe it, then Yong Myung will now prove it to him. The elder couldn't believe that Yong Myung deflected his demon-killing poison with one hand. One touch of this poison deprives you of sight and hearing, and he blocks it so easily. Are his inner powers superior to his skills honed over decades? How dare he make fun of the great elder? His hand glowed with a ghostly light, and Yen Meng took out a bottle of poison from his bosom, which he took from Yen Nen and handed it to the elder. This is a familiar thing, isn't it? Where did he get the poison that he gave to his granddaughter? Yong Min threw the bottle on the ground, and it broke. The poisonous liquid poured out in a fiery stream. The elder recoiled from the all-consuming fire. Yong Meng continued to say that this was one of the ten poisons of the Tang family. This bottle contains the poison of the fire dragon Kavarenko. The soldiers froze at this news. Yong Myung asked, Is it allowed to use the Tang family's poisons for personal use? Wan Jin replied that this is strictly prohibited. These poisons are so dangerous that even an experienced warrior cannot handle them. And since the method of making them has been lost, and there are not many poisons left, their value is even higher. In the Tang clan, they are valued more than gold. Using them for personal purposes is punishable by death. All the elders howled loudly that Wan Jin had no right to say that. We need to get rid of the rebels as soon as possible. Yong Meng grinned evilly and agreed with the elders' opinion. No one can bypass the laws of the clan, not even the elder, but at least he will leave with honor. And his poisoner granddaughter is already waiting for him in the next life. He threw the elder into the poisonous flames. The elders are the rotten roots of the Tang family, and it is not for them to decide who should be the head. Tan Yong Meng himself decides where he belongs. Wan Jin was amazed at how quickly and fearlessly the guy solved all the problems. The fate of the Tang clan can change here and now. But then another old man came into play, who did not want to lose power. He demanded that the criminal who encroached on the life of the elder be immediately eliminated on the spot. Yong Meng asked if the elder knew that his disciple was trying to destroy the Tang family. The elder perked up his ears. What is this bastard talking about? Kin Ling was a spy for the Dark Moon Sword Sect. The elder couldn't believe it. The boy deliberately slandered his student. Yong Myung replied that the Dark Moon Sword Sect had invaded the competition area. The elder demanded proof that Kinlin was connected with them. Cho Nil stepped forward and replied that he could provide this evidence. He fought with Kyun Ling until young men came to his aid. He received these scars in that battle, and they are not inflicted by poisons or hidden weapons, because Kin Lin fought with a blade and used the technique of dual swords. One of the elders exclaimed that he saw Mac and Hu fighting with a sword. The bodies of most of those he attacked were mutilated, and the wounds of those who survived were similar to the wounds of this young man. Cho Nil added that during the fight, the opponent himself admitted to him that he was a spy and gave his name, Mak Inguk. The elder remembered that there was a child born from a maid and that was his name. Is all this really true? Yong Myung thanked Cho Nil for his help. He replied that he was repaying him for his salvation. Despite the fact that the elder realized that he had a spy in the family, he gave the order to the guards to detain Yong Myung. He did not want to give up power, but the soldiers did not move. Yong Myung told his grandfather not to disgrace himself, now all the evidence is known. Even though the elder knew nothing, if Kun Ling became the head of the clan, the Tang family would fall into the clutches of the Dark Moon Sword Sect. This is criminal ignorance. He cannot escape suspicion of harboring a spy. This entails the destruction of the spiritual core and a ban on practicing martial arts.
Several blades flew out of Yang Men's hands and wounded the elder in the shoulder. Yang Myung said that he did not believe that the elder deliberately kept a spy with him, so he could leave it at that. The elder noted to himself that the guy knew how to use a blade, but he did not notice that the elder managed to hold a bottle of poison in his hand. This was another of the ten poisons, Mukin poison invisible, a poison without color, smell and taste. The victim does not know that he is poisoned until symptoms appear. The elder crushed the bottle in his hand. He spent half his life compiling this poison. Invisible poisonous fumes were approaching Yang Myung. No matter how strong he is, he cannot cope with this poison. He will kill this boy, and he will not even understand what happened to him. Hyung Meng saw perfectly well that the old man was up to something. He struck first, and a strong blow struck the elder's shoulder, who cut off his hand. Everyone around shouted that Yang Myung himself decided to spare the elder, and now he was attacking. How can he call himself the young head of the clan? Near the severed hand, people suddenly noticed a strange bottle from which liquid spilled. Hyung Meng directly asked if the elder really wanted to poison him on the sly. This is an attempt to kill the young head of the clan, and as a result the destruction of the family. He raised his hand over the elder. This is considered treason and is punishable by death. The elder collapsed to the ground. Everyone listened to Yang Myung's words. No one is above the laws of the clan. Anyone who disregards the law because of his position will be punished by him personally. Their clan is now in decline. Their enemies expect them to die out, but they must change that. He promises that the Tang family members will be able to live in peace on their land. Neither the Death Alliance nor the demonic cult can threaten them. Therefore he asks not the elders, but the people, whether they recognize him as the head of the clan. Yong Myung's mother belatedly learned about her son's victory from a neighbor. The neighbor said that all the people in the square recognized her son as the head of the clan and bowed their knee before him. The mother didn't even bother to go and see the child's triumph herself, but now she realized what bright prospects were opening up before her, and her cheeks turned red. Yong Myung was holding a meeting. Now all decisions will be made after his approval. The elders did not like that real power had left them, but they did not dare to object. The chief elder advised the young leader to take an advisor while he was still so young. Young Myung decided that his words made sense. He will appoint an assistant for himself, but will not dance to the tune of the elders. Poisons also came under the control of the Hall of Hidden Weapons and Poisons, after the abuse of Kavarenko's poison. The elders retained their guard, but Young Myung was not interested in them. They will control their troops, but will now support them at their own expense. No money will be allocated from the treasury for this. None of the elders wanted to take responsibility for the guard, and all the detachments were united under the common name Kovan and assigned to the rear of the hidden weapons. Some of the fighters were unhappy with this state of affairs. Yong Myung urged them to forget about privilege and do their jobs well. Many fighters dreamed of taking revenge on Yong Myung, but it was not difficult for him to shut them up. A few days later, Yong Myung summoned representatives of the Jagal family. Jigal thought as he bowed, no one could have thought that this boy would destroy the elders by emphasizing strength and duty. He also gets angry if someone says a word against him. Standing in front of him was a strong and confident young man who wanted to ask the Jigal family for a favor. Who would have thought that this was number 28? He spoke and acted like a true clan leader. Jigal asked what the young leader wants from them. As far as Yong Myung understood, the Jigal clan's defense of the dome was quite good. Is this protection capable of keeping uninvited guests out? Except him, of course. He would like to establish this defense here as well, to prevent the alliance from approaching. Yegel responded angrily, that this method of protection cannot be established without the consent of the Jagel family. Its creation requires rare artifacts, and its maintenance requires several craftsmen, which the family cannot afford. Chagel was hit by a beam of Yang Myung's internal energy. Chagal started to run in horror, but tripped and fell. Yong Myung said that he knew about his deal with Tang Yong Nen. Jigal could have prevented the invasion of the Dark Moon Sword sect, but did not do so. Did he really think that Yong Myung wouldn't know about this? Now let the Jigal family establish protection in the Tang clan, and he will forget about everything. And this is not a proposal, but an order. The motto of the Tang family is to avenge the wrong tenfold. This is why Yong Myung killed the elders. If Jigal does not agree, then he knows what will happen to him and the whole family. Jigal quickly agreed. He agrees to everything. Just let the head of the clan not touch his family. Yong Myung was confident that Jagel would quickly handle everything. A few days later, Yong Myung called his teammates Yi Chong and Miri over. They were so polite to him that Yong Myung was surprised. He asked them to treat him casually when they were alone. The whole team immediately put their feet on the table. Yong Myung thought that they could have been more polite. Yuri asked why he called them. Yong Myung replied that he appointed her father as commander-in-chief. This had the effect of a bomb exploding. 
He really hopes that the girl described her father correctly and that he will be useful. He turned to Mira and Yi Zhang and asked if there were many people who had no connection with the elders and their talents were wasted. Young Myung wants to take them under his wing. Mira didn't know anyone, and Yi Zhang lowered his head. He was related to the Medicine King clan. He didn't know if he should talk about it, but it concerns Yang Myung. More precisely, his father. The people who poisoned him. This is the Medicine King clan. Everyone was dumbfounded by this news. How could this be the Medicine King's clan? Yang Myung asked Yi Zhang to tell him everything he knew. The Medicine King clan's estate is such a closed place that even the hands of the elders could not reach there. All research on poisons and medicines was carried out here, and welfare was maintained through medical care and the sale of medicines. It was to the Medicine King's clan that the Tang family owed it to the fact that they were able to survive the attack of the Heavenly Radiance Demon Lord. Yi Zhang said that his grandfather was the head of the clan, but he was later suspended. When my grandfather was the head of the family, one person began to come to him every day. It was Yang Myung's father. After the attack by the Demon Lord, many were unhappy with the poison phoenix, but he always protected her from evil tongues. But Yang Myung's father was an ordinary student without inner strength, and the consequences of conflicts that escalated into fights made themselves felt. If an ordinary person is attacked using internal force, he will suffer from deep wounds. Yet Yang Myung's father resisted no matter what. But then it only got worse. The assistant to the head of the Medicine King's clan was Tang Il, and a serious conflict occurred with him. He was spreading gossip about the poison phoenix, and Yang Myung's father caught him doing it. Without thinking, he tried to use his martial arts skills to punish the gossiper and he was stopped only after the intervention of Grandfather Yi Zhong. Tang Il was excluded from the list of candidates to become the next head of the clan. Tang Il began to take revenge. He killed Yi Chong's father and poisoned his grandfather and imprisoned him. After the poisoning, his grandfather was out of his mind and no one would believe Yi Zhong. That's why Yi Zhong went to the competition. For three years he was safe. No one could kill him because he knows everything. He really wants to see his grandfather, but is afraid to return. Therefore, he cannot recommend anyone to Yang Myung from the medicine clan. Yang Myung asked why Tang Il left his grandfather alive. Yi Zhang replied that there was an inner sanctuary on the clan's territory, which even the elders did not know about. The pearl of a mythical creature living in lava is kept there. This is the pearl of the thousand-year-old fire carp. Everyone thought it was just a legend, and were very surprised. According to legend, a hundred years ago, the young head of the palace of the fiery sun acquired this pearl. She gained colossal strength and ascended to Wagen. She is not susceptible to aging, poisons, or diseases. The pearl of such a creature contains poison. Taking it without neutralizing the poison is certain death, and an inept attempt to get rid of the poison leads to a decrease in the effectiveness of the pearl. Only Yi Zhang's grandfather could achieve success in this matter. Tang Il's task is to get the pearl, ascend to Huagen, and leave the Tang clan to organize his own sect. This is a real riot. Yang Myung thought the plan was idiotic. If Tang Il even gets the pearl, she needs to achieve enlightenment. Yi Zhang surprised him. They were together for three years and he acted carefree and never spoke about problems. Yang Myung was very grateful to his comrade for his frankness. If they rid the medicine clan of Tang Il and restore his grandfather's power, will the clan be able to function as before? Yi Zhang confidently said that he could. He has no less strength than Tang Il, and if he recruits capable doctors, Yi Zhang will be able to train them. Hyung Myung decided to immediately advance to the clan of the King of Medicine. He will destroy all those who encroached on this clan and its founders. State of the Medicine King clan. Tang Il thought gloomily that Tang Viren's son had become the young head of the clan. It's bad, but everything happened when he was a baby, and he cannot know what Tang Il did to his father. He was much more worried about Yi Zhang, who had fled the clan. Did he really just abandon his grandfather? Tang Il grinned evilly. This means that this puppy's own skin is more valuable. Now the most important thing is the pearl. How to absorb her energy and reach Waryong. Even if this damn old man comes to his senses, he won't say a word. Neutralize the poison yourself. One mistake and the pearl is lost. His thoughts were interrupted by a worker who shouted that the young head of the clan had come to them. He came not alone, but with soldiers and is carrying out reprisals in the yard. Hwandan gave the command not to miss anyone. And Yang Myung and Izhang went to the main building. The expression on Yang Myung's face did not bode well. The doctor shouted that they were not to blame for anything, and did not deserve such treatment. Myung at this time searched all the premises, but did not find his grandfather. He attacked the arrested doctors, demanding that they tell him where the grandfather was taken. They looked at each other and said uncertainly that they didn't know. Wanjin swung his sword over their heads. The doctors ducked down. They realized that they would not deceive the young head of the clan. Young Myung said that they can pretend as much as they want, 
but he will still expose them. Immediately, the doctors began to testify. When the competition began, the current head ordered the former head to be imprisoned in a punishment cell, a nightmarish, dark and cold place. He Jung shook with indignation. Previously, it was an isolation ward for those suspected of having infectious diseases. But it was so cold and damp that people got even more sick, so they closed it. Yong Myung ordered Wan Jin to restore order and wait at the entrance, while he and Yi Jong go to the punishment cell. The medic's pleas for mercy rushed after him, but he did not pay attention to them. The young men walked along a deep, dark corridor in a cave. After quite a long time, they came to the entrance to the punishment cell. Yi Jong was worried that his grandfather had already died, but Yong Myung sensed the presence of a living person. An emaciated old man lay unconscious behind bars. Hyung Myung cut the bars, and Yi Jong rushed to his grandfather. When the guy left for the competition, the grandfather was not in such serious condition. He was probably poisoned with Sangon, a poison that dissipates internal energy. Young Myung put his hand on his comrade's shoulder. They are here to save their grandfather. Can Yi Jung determine if there was any other poison? The young man named a poison that affects the brain and does not kill the victim, but makes an idiot out of him. Antidotes are useless against it. It spreads throughout the body and penetrates the brain. Without intervention in the early stages, nothing will help. Young Myung asked Yi Jung to hold his grandfather and put his hand on his chest. He began to fill the old man's entire body with his internal energy. Using the technique of poisonous madness and absolute absorption, his profound energy absorbed all the poison in his body. The old man's hand became its normal pink color, although the rest of his body remained unchanged. Young man's poisonous madness had absorbed extreme poisons many times. Now he will simply absorb the poison so as not to harm the old man's body. The old man began to breathe normally again, and his complexion became better. Finally, he opened his eyes and asked where he was. He recognized his grandson, but he could not understand who was standing next to him. Suddenly he recognized the second guy and happily said that he was glad to see Viren. After some time, the old man came to his senses enough to be able to sit up. He learned that the current young head of the clan is Viren's son. Hyung Myung replied that Yi Jong told him how the old man took care of his father. Fate is an amazing thing. The old man was saved by a child who, due to the old man's fault, did not even know his father. It's a pity that Viren can't see what kind of son he has. He is just a frail old man, but he wants to serve the young head of the clan. Young Myung carefully threw a cape over his grandfather's shoulders and replied that he would be happy to hire him. The doctors of the Medicine King clan could not believe that the old man was still standing when he, accompanied by the young men, left the cave. At this time, Tang Il appeared on the square and threateningly demanded an explanation. The Tang clan is still alive only thanks to the ancient medicine clan. Yong Myung calmly replied that Tang Il saw where they just came from, but he was still trying to play dumb. These are Tang Il's last words. Why doesn't he say something more worthwhile? Tang Il pushed his colleagues aside and began to run. But he was stopped by a poisoned needle thrown by Yong Myung. It was the poison of the heart-piercing flame. It was created by Yijong. Yong Myung asked Tang Il if Yijong was worthy of taking his place as the head of the Medicine King clan. Tang Il could no longer answer. Yong Myung ordered Banhui's squad to destroy the rest of the cruel members of the Medicine Clan. Rumors that the Medicine King's clan had been destroyed quickly spread among the people. Many people condemned this. It was only thanks to the Medicine Clan that the Tang family was able to survive, and now they have lost such support. Yong Men and his comrades looked at the pearl. We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. The old man asked for a few days to neutralize the poison. However, Yong Myung replied that he would take the pearl as it was. The poison of the pearl was so strong that it could be seen. Yong Myung didn't want to miss out on such value. He extended his hand to the pearl, and he began to neutralize her poison. It contains the strongest poison, which is expected from a spirit living in lava, but this is nothing compared to the flame of a fire dragon. If it were given to an ordinary person in its pure form, the poison would burn him immediately. What strength does he have? Yong Myung had never realized the power of the ten poisons, and now decided to learn more about them. After purification, he felt the power of the spirit of the pearl. Finally, after a few days, Yong Myung decided it was time to see his mother. The mother realized that she was very lucky to have her son, so she received him warmly. Now her living conditions have improved a lot. She thanked her son for what he did for her, and he even came to talk to her. In his past life, Yong Myung was only worried about the approach of death. When he reached the top, he had no one to share his joy with. His past life was full of regrets, but he won't allow that in this one. He brought a pearl to his mother. He didn't need it because he had already reached Wagen and his mother felt it. Yong Myung's mother realized that she had hit the jackpot in this life and joyfully accepted the pearl. After increasing her strength and devouring the pearl, Yong Myung's mother took up self-improvement. 
He was surprised that his mother hid her powers. He helped her a little and she reached Wagyan. People gathered in the Hall of Hidden Weapons and Poisons. The head of the clan of the Poison King, Tang Ji Hek, was dissatisfied with the general gathering early in the morning. He stood next to the head of the Dark King Tang clan, Chong Hui. Everyone was waiting for the young head of the clan. It's rude to make people wait for him. Yong Myung entered and announced from the threshold that he had gathered everyone to discuss an important issue. He recalled that the fifth elder proposed choosing a regent who would lead the affairs until Yong Meng reached the age of ruling. And he wanted Yong Myung to choose one of the elders for this position. Yong Myung replied that it would not be the elder. In the place of the Soviet, he will put his mother, the Poison Phoenix. The current ruler of Sichuan, the head of the alliance reached Huayegi by going against all agreements. Now the mother had something to talk about with her son. She asked the day before how he himself reached Huayegi. But Yong Myung did not dare to tell her that all this was thanks to his past life. He said that he drank Ferenko's poison at the competition. And although it was dangerous, he was completely fine. He developed the ability to resist poisons and ascended to Huayegi. Mother's jaw dropped. She asked her son to get her a position so that they could protect him and feel good about themselves. So she became her son's advisor. Now his mother became the regent and the new head of the Sichuan Tang clan. She thanked everyone present and promised that she would be the head of the clan until her son grew up. And on his instructions, she will build a new foundation for the destroyed Tang clan. People perceived this information differently. Her brother was sincerely happy, but others were outraged. She got down to business. The name of the Medicine King clan was erased and replaced with the Medicine Temple. Tang Hol became the head of the temple, and his grandson Tang Yizhong became the deputy head. Yuri's father, the new commander of the general staff, was tasked with conducting a full audit of the clan's expenses and income, and soon he discovered evidence of the theft of the treasury by the elders. The funds obtained in this way were enough for some time to cover the costs of maintaining the family. Tang Jihek, the head of the Poison King clan, was dismissed from his post, and with him most of the elders who were embezzling the family's property. Yong Myung was very pleased with the work done. At first he wanted to live a quiet life, but before he knew it, so many important things appeared around him. People appeared next to him whom he could call his friends. Tens and hundreds of Tang family members, Yong Myung has something to protect. But before it was difficult for him to even maintain health in his body, and he often regretted that he was born. The Tang clan must become stronger so that no one attacks them. Neither the head of the Black Death Alliance nor the Demon Lord of the Sky Radiance. No power will be a threat to the Tang Clan anymore. The head of the Black Death Alliance learned that there was a new leader in the Tang Clan. Ye Seol Ryong, the head of the Fire Heart Squad, reported that Mak In Hu and Jung Yan Sun were defeated by this new head. They were both members of the main school and renowned warriors of the Alliance. Yu Giljong, the head of the Black Death Alliance, silently listened as Ye Seol Ren said that the Tang Clan must be destroyed before they accumulate strength and regain their former power. He didn't want to do this at all. Solren insisted that such a step would be correct. Giljin became angry and ordered Solren to leave the Tang clan alone. He has other plans for the Tang family. Mac and Chan disobeyed his order and acted without permission. They were lucky that Young Myung killed them. The guy is not as simple as he seemed. We need to get to know him better. He ordered a message to be sent to the Tang clan. He invites the young head of the Tang clan to the upcoming Sichuan Provincial Council.